Well, hello everybody. Uh, my name's Josh Brown. I'm ORCHID's Director of Partnerships and I'm here today to talk a little bit about what ORCHID is and what we're doing to improve research communications. ORCHID uh, exists to solve an ongoing problem, an old problem in scholarly communications and that is that authors identify themselves using their names when they publish. It's completely natural. But a name is not enough. Um, if you think about it, my name's Josh Brown. Um, I'm Joshua Brown. If you look on my passport, I'm Joshua Alexander Brown. Um, that could be Josh A. Brown, J. A. Brown. If you then think about, as my career progresses, I could go from being Dr. Brown to Professor Brown. All of those names will appear on different publications in different places at different times in my career. And you can't match those with a machine. Computers recognize those as different strings of numbers. Also, Brown is not exactly an uncommon name. It's not as common as Wang. Now, this, this is a genuine citation from Europe PubMed Central that shows 38 authors on one paper that share the same last name. And again, computers and people have real problems telling them apart. If you also think that researchers spread their identity around the internet, this, this example slide shows different profiles and different identifiers taken from the email signature of one researcher. So you can see it's a pretty complicated picture that we, we paint of our own activities and our own lives as we move around online and through the world of research. So one of the ways that we can address this is by using identifiers. Identifiers help to match people to products, to their outputs, to patents, to publications. And crucially, what we do at ORCID is we provide identifiers for people. ORCID stands for the Open Researcher and Contributor Identifier, and we provide identifiers for anybody who undertakes research, contributes to the research enterprise, or helps to move their disciplines forward. We, provide, we do this by providing identifiers for individual researchers. We also provide an openly accessible registry for those identifiers and for any information that might be connected to them to help people disambiguate one author from another. We provide a set of standard procedures, APIs, and open documentation for helping other systems to use ORCID IDs to connect researchers to their affiliations, whether that's employment or education and their activities. We are also a community endeavour. We are a membership organisation. We're a not-for-profit global membership body. We're owned by our members and we are governed and led by the community. And we are international scale. We serve the global research community and we're open so we can work with any organisation, charitable, not-for-profit or commercial. ORCID's vision is a world where everyone who participates in research or scholarship is connected to their contributions. Now, it's, what's interesting is this idea about connecting people across disciplines, borders and time. If you think it's across a whole career, people move around the world, people collaborate with researchers in other countries and in other disciplines. It may, by connecting all of these pieces of information together, we make it much, much easier to re recognise and reward the full breadth of a researcher's contributions to their discipline. Our core principles include researcher control. The individual researcher owns the data that's attached to their ORCID identifier and they control every aspect of their record. Community governance. Our board of directors is elected from our community members. Openness. We believe openness boosts transparency, the sustainability and the strength of science. And persistence. We are a piece of infrastructure. People build ORCID identifiers into their systems and we need to be around today and for the long term to enable them to do that. We're an opt-in system. Indivi as I said, the individual owns and controls their record. They decide on what gets attached to their record, who can add information to their ORCID record, and decide how visible that information is. The ORCID record is portable and it travels with the individual throughout their career. And their, your email address may change when you change job, but your ORCID ID can travel with you. As I said, we are a community effort. We were set up by, an, by, a, by, a, by, a, uh, by a consortium of funders, research institutes, publishers, and other research bodies. And we are governed by that group, and we are a membership organization. 
We depend on the community to build ORCID integrations and to add the information to ORCID identifiers that makes the registry really useful. Our community has grown dramatically. The registry launched in 2012 and since then more than 3.3 million researchers have visited our registry to register for an identifier. We have about 700 members from 39 countries, including national consortia and growing number of national consortia all around the world. And we're in integrated in more than 250 different research information systems in every sector of the research community. 62% of our members are research institutions. Um, the second largest group are publishers but we also have repositories and profile organisations, funders and professional and scholarly associations amongst our membership. Around the world, just over half of our integrations are in Europe, which is our fastest growing region, uh, with North America being the second, but we are growing dramatically in Asia Pacific and we're putting a lot of resources into expanding our coverage in the Middle East, Africa and Latin America. We've already got a huge number of articles with ORCID IDs connected to them. Um, this includes Web of Science, Europe PubMed Central and Elsevier. And an increasing number of academic publishers now require ORCID IDs from their corresponding authors before they'll accept a manuscript. Now the value of this is that actually it means that you can guarantee you have that ORCID identifier. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the potential benefits of this. So one of the things we do is we provide an auto-update functionality. When the publisher collect, collects the ORCID ID for the, for the corresponding author, they include that in the metadata. They can then mint a DOI, a digital object identifier, for the article, which makes it easier to find and to track the usage of that article on the web. And they include the ORCID ID in the information they, they attach to that DOI. When Crossref, who provide DOIs for articles, detect that ORCID ID, they then push that information back to the ORCID record, and from there, a, a full citation for the record can flow to any system that's connected to the ORCID registry. Researchers don't have to type in or report their own work manually, it's just done automatically for them, pretty much in close to real time. Uh, there's a similar system that's available for research data. Datasight provide digital object identifiers for data sets. They detect an ORCID ID. They can push that information back to the ORCID registry, and from there it flows to any other system. I mean, in real life, it happens fast. This, this is a, a genuine researcher reaction from Twitter to discovering that they received a notification that their article had been published, and less than two hours later, that full citation was in their ORCID record without them having to lift a finger. We're also working to reward peer review, grant review, peer review of articles before submission. And again, the organisation for whom the review service is conducted control this process, but it can be pushed back to the ORCID record. And from there again, you can start to recognise more kinds of activities. The potential of this is huge. The idea of being able to have this real-time understanding of scientific research, as this quote from Jonathan Crown from the Wellcome Trust says, before now, this would have been extremely costly, if not impossible. And actually, I would argue that in many cases, this has not been possible up until now. Um, funders are recognising the potential of this. If you think about the burden and the amount of administration that goes into applying for research funding, reporting on the outcomes of that funding, it's a huge amount of administration and effort to draw together all of that information. These funders recognise that ORCID can improve the process of applying for grants, it can improve the recognition of different kinds of contributions to research, and it can make the process of reporting, declaring your outputs, and assessing the impact of that research much, much simpler and more efficient. I think I've demonstrated this morning that the impact of ORCID is across the whole research sector, the whole research enterprise, and that it enables researchers, their employers, and the people who pay for that research to understand what's being done and to recognise and reward a wide range of contributions to research, whilst at the same time helping researchers to spend more time making those contributions and much less time managing them. Thanks very much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you today.